Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. You'll have to excuse my wet shirt. I was doing some picking up and I found my white ink, my bleed proof white ink, and it was dry. So I added water to it to see if that would reconstitute it and I started shaking it and I had white speckles all down the front of me. So I've been spraying myself and wiping them off. So I will dry, but <clears throat> excuse the uh, inappropriate wear here. Uh, today I am going to do a couple things. First of all, I'll probably do two separate videos, but I wanted to get started on this box and I have a little surprise coming that I can't wait to show you guys probably next week. Um, I bought something on Facebook Marketplace, which is so cool, an antique that I will use for watercolor supplies. And I cannot wait to show you guys. It's gonna be exciting. I am so excited. It cost me more to ship it and insure it than it did to buy it. This person underpriced this way, way underpriced it. I think the average cost for one of these was $150 and I got it for 40. Now, I didn't like the way part of it was stained. It was a little dark for my liking. And if I ever want to change it, I will. But really, it's just going to be used as a storage case. But I can't wait to show you, and I'm not going to tell you any more about it. I'm really excited. But in the meantime, I thought I would uh, stain and paint this little box that I showed you a few weeks ago. Um, so I've got my stain here, and I'm going to go ahead and stain it. But then I'm going to need to let it dry. And um, after I let it dry, then I'll paint it. The stain that I have is a dark walnut stain. I'd probably like to do a lighter stain, but I don't think I have a lighter stain. I'll ask Pat because I would love to do um, something that's more, not as dark, you know what I mean? But either way, they'll work. It'll be pretty either way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I also want to do a painting today. So this is ridiculous. It's a separate video, Sharon. Just shut up. Just shut up. You do this all the time. Oh, then I have to edit everything out. Why can't you just talk the way you're supposed to talk? Then we wouldn't have a problem, would we? Oh, it's so annoying. And I can't think because I have a headache. But maybe I'll just do another video. So today I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and stain this box. I have to let it dry and then I will go ahead and show you how I paint it, seal it, and I'm able to use it. It's very simple and if you have gouache, you'll be able to do this with gouache. You could do it with acrylic paint, you could do it with anything, but I'm going to use gouache because I love painting with gouache. So I'm going to stain it first, let it dry, and the stain will still allow gouache to adhere to it so you don't have to worry about that and then we'll seal it when we're done and voila that's it so uh let's get started oh also um i got my new camera my new phone so it looks like i have a very wide angle here my television which is way over here and my back door which is way over there so it's kind of uh giving you a wider angle so i'm hoping when i flip the camera over that my wide angle will pick up everything including the colors i'm using in the palette along with my painting so that you can see things a little better because i do get a lot of comments about well i wish i could see your palette and see how you're mixing your paints or whatever so hopefully hopefully this will work so we'll see how it goes let me know if you notice a difference in the camera the pixels are much higher than they were and um uh yeah and I've got a lot more cameras. I think there's five on this one, so we should be doing good. Let's get going. Okay, so here I've got my stain. Oh, that's right, I was gonna see if I could get a lighter color. Let me see. Okay, so I did get a lighter color, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, this one is called Ipswich Pine. It's a color that we used a lot in our house. And I like that it's got such a natural light color to it like pine <laughs> and it's probably a pine box so it'll it'll look good on this but um we'll just go ahead and stain it and then I have to let it dry for a little while I, I'm not worried about letting it dry overnight or anything like that it'll be fine
So I'm just taking a paper towel and I'm going to wipe it on there um, real quick. It shouldn't take long. Okay, so I finished staining and it's pretty much dry. It, it's probably not perfectly dry, but what I plan on doing is um, I've decided to do a branch with cherry blossoms and they're going to kind of drape over the edge of the box, maybe a little over the back edge. I've kind of drawn a branch on here just so that I have, I'll show you here if I zoom in. You could probably see that um, right here, I've got this branch going like this and it starts to come down and then I just let it trail off. The rest I will do freehand. Okay, so I've gotten out some gouache. <clears throat> On the last box I did, I covered the top with cold pressed ground, um, which is a ground that has fiber in it for watercolor to adhere to. But I'm going to try putting this directly on the box. I've seen it done before, and I don't want to cover all the stain, so I don't want to put cold press ground down. So these are the colors that I am using right now. Um, I have put out some sepia white, of course. I have my quinacridone rose, and this one is quinacridone magenta. Um, I put out a little bit of raw sienna, wherever that is, there it is, and then I put out some um, Naples yellow. So um, I'm going to start with the branch, I'll let that dry, I'll add more branches and we'll add flowers and just see where this leads us. I also have a white acrylic pen if I want to put some little dots on things, or I can use white gouache. We'll just see how it goes. Okay, so I had to grab my gouache brushes, and most of the gouache brushes I use are flats, but I will be using a couple of rounds as well as a script brush when I'm working. That's a number three flat. Just working with a small brush, and I will go ahead and start by painting the branch in, and then I'm gonna do some shadowing and highlighting of the branch. First, I'm going in on the branch with some sepia, and I notice that it's really soaking in very quickly into the wood. It's just sucking it up. So I'm going in with thicker amounts of gouache than I would on paper. It's not super thick, and I am using water, but uh, it is pretty thick. Otherwise, it just soaks right into the wood and disappears. And you'll notice that later when I start doing the flowers. I have to put those on very thick as well. So I'll go ahead and do this branch in sepia and then I'm gonna start putting in shadow and highlight. Okay, now that I've got the brown on, I'm going back in with some black and I'm putting black on the underside of the branch and then I'm just taking the colors and kind of blending them together. Uh, and if your gouache dries, it dries like within seconds on this wood because it just sucks it right up. Just add a little water and reconstitute the gouache and blend it together. But that way you'll get your shadow on the underside of the branch. And now I'm going back in with some magenta, just to add some more redness to the brown. You don't have to do this, it's just something I always do. I either add a magenta color or purple of some sort to my branches and my trees. It's just something I do. Um, I think it comes from painting with pastels that I get that from. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and blend it. You almost don't see it anymore. 
and then once that's done I'm gonna go ahead in with some white on the top to put highlights on You'll see I blend the white in too, and later I'm going to go back and I'm going to add more white, but I just want to get the branch to have some dimension to it, so that's why I'm doing that. And now I'm just adding a little more onto the branches. I'm going to go ahead and add all the branches on that I want to put flowers on. Later, I will add a few more little thin branches with a script liner uh, to pull the flowers together in bunches. You'll see what I mean. So as I'm putting the white on, I'm trying to take a drier brush and just sort of dry brushing it into the rest of the branch. It gives the branch texture, and I'll be doing this a few times until I get it just the way I want it. I'm going to go ahead and start the blossoms now on the branches and then when I'm done I'm going to go back and I will finish all of the branch and the highlighting and everything the way I want it. And I'll be using mostly rose and white to do all of these blossoms. I just use different values and start mixing them together. <coughs> but um, at the end I do end up grabbing some olive green, mixing it with a little of that yellow, and um, or I must have pulled out some yellow, that's right, and I put on a few leaves at the end. Now I'm just dotting this all on so you're really not missing much and then later I'll put some more specific blossoms on top so that you can see the actual blossom. Here I've added a little more rose and I'm going a little bit deeper in value and I'll continue to do that and I just scatter it around. Now don't freak out when you do something like this. This is the ugly stage. <laughs> so just keep going and keep layering and you will do just fine. And one of the nice things that's so forgiving about gouache is that you can layer over it uh, and you won't have any problems. But I'm going to continue to change the values and add lighter pinks and whites and that kind of thing in there until I get the branches full enough. So you're not going to see just bright rose. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry you guys, I had a phone call <laughs> and it was an important phone call and uh, I kept sort of kept painting a little bit. So I got, I mean, it's pretty much the same old thing. Now all I'm going to do is add some branches on here. I added a little bit of green for leaves and now the dog wants in, hang on. Okay, so uh, back to what I was doing, what was I doing? Oh, we're gonna put branches on just on those distant distant um, flowers and I need a I'm going to use a script brush which I don't have in my gouache brushes so let me get one of my script brushes over here and we can go from there this one's just one of my Zem golden Taclon brushes these brushes are nice they last a long time so I've just got to wet my branch stuff up here because everything's dry Thank you. 
Now I'm not going across the top of these because the flowers are on top, they're underneath, and you wanna make sure if you're gonna do something like this, this branch is coming down this way. And I wanna make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And then just add that in and then maybe have it trail off a little bit past. That'll work. And then that's a falling flower, that's a falling flower. So. I gotta go over the side here. I'm sorry, I was talking on the phone for so long and I just started painting. I had a brush in my hand and it was just habit. I thought, uh-oh, I shouldn't be doing this right now. And so I stopped, but it was basically flowers and then I just added some green just because I wanted to, you know. This is gonna go this way. Oh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a box for me for my brushes, so. And then over here, I did a little bit too on the end. I need to fix this, though. I don't really like the way that turned out. I need to add a little more flowers to the end of it because that's too thick of a branch. So I'm just gonna take this. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me see. If I hold it up like this, you can kind of see. So I'll do that. I'll just hold it up like this. I'm gonna wet this gouache again and reactivate it and add some more flowers. Oh, I may not be able to do that. Let's see, can get the white. Let me just add it to this pink over here. Need to wet it a little more. Sometimes I'm making it look like petals. Sometimes I'm not. Or you might just see two petals pop out. some white. Oops, that's too thick. I got a big lump of stuff on there. Let's take that off. Oops, it's hard to hold up for you guys. I'm sorry. I'll have to cover that maybe. You got to really make sure you have a lot of paint on because it sinks right into the wood, but it's holding really well. So now I'm just gonna have one, one of these fall down here and that I'll make into a bloom. And then another one can fall over here. It'll be a little bit bigger. Now I've got white on the inside of my brush, pink on the outside. So it's working really well this way. I'm just gonna keep it for like it's pushed up sideways, that'll work. Okay, and now I need to fix these other ones because I don't like the way they're looking. They look like blobs, so I need more pink here. Now I'm just gonna let it dry. Actually, I wanna go over this a little more and add a little more white to blend in so that it looks like the sun is shining on this. So I'm just gonna put some white in some different spots. And then I'm gonna blend it in with 
the brown and the purpley color I was using, the magenta. And I'm just gonna use that, go underneath, keep it kind of wet, and then I'm gonna blend them together with a slightly, very slightly wet, wet brush. I should probably dry it a little more. There we go. I want it to be more like dry brushed. It's hard to do on wood. I need a little more white again because it didn't blend as well as I hoped. That's too much. Okay. If you can dry brush it, then it looks like bark. You get the grain of the wood in there. It, work, it works really well. And that looks like a little divot in the wood. So I'm going to leave it and actually add some darkness to the center of it. There. And I think I'm all set. Now uh, maybe a little bit over here where the light would hit this right here. And then once it's done, I'll let it dry and then I'm going to go over it with wax and we will wax it. Very simple. And I'm not doing anything to the inside. I just stained it, but I will wax the inside so that it's solid. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just add a few flowers in there. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? So maybe I'll just add some little loose flowers floating around on the inside. Let's see. I need more paint, though, because I've run out. I'm just going to be using this pink, mixing it over here. Taking some of that white, mixing it in, and then I'm going to go over it again. Now I'm going to go ahead and everything's dry. It dries in a matter of like two minutes. So I will get the wax. We will wax the top. And then after I, actually I got to go back in my house and get it because what I'm going to use is actually furniture wax, not the Durlin's wax medium, Dorland's wax medium, which I usually use. I'm going to try just using the furniture wax. What I did the last on that other box that I did was I used the Dorland's wax medium and it had a very matte finish. So I decided to go over it again with furniture wax, which comes to a shine, you buff it. So I'm gonna go get that, be right back, and we will finish it. Okay, so I've got the finishing wax here. That's all this is, just natural by Minwax. And this is not a sponsored video. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I used this on one of my tables in my house and I'm just going to take a little bit and see how well it does. I'll start with the corner or maybe these few little flowers here and see, whoops, see how well it goes on. Does it take them off? Nope, it does not take them off. Good. I'm rubbing them and those were the last things I painted so this wax is soaking right in so I can see I'm going to have to do a few layers. I'm wondering if it's going to darken the paint at all. Let's see. No, not too bad. I don't think so. So I'll just keep putting it on. Put it on nice and thick so that I can rub it off later. Then once it dries, it's got to dry for, I don't know, a little while, 20 minutes or so. And then you can just, you can just um, buff it and it'll come to a shine.
Okay, so I've put on about, I don't know, three layers of wax because this wood has been just soaking it up. And I've been buffing with the towel. And I don't know if you can see the sheen on this or not. I'm sorry for the wiggling. But um, there's a sheen on it. It's kind of hard to see the shine on the camera. But it's getting there. And I may put another layer on. It's still not perfectly dry yet. I feel a little bit of stickiness. So I'm probably pulling some of the wax off. But it's much shinier than it was when it started. It's very hard to tell the glossiness on camera. Maybe you can see it with the light shining on it. You see how glossy it was. It was not like that in the beginning. So the wax is taking shape. I think I'm going to put another couple coats on it, but um, I'll wait overnight and let it dry some more before I put another coat. I still need to buff the inside. I have not buffed that yet, but um, that's harder to buff. So, but it's just got a few of those flowers going down the center. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And um, if you want to get a box, you can buy these boxes on Amazon really cheap. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Have some fun with this and show me what you've done. Uh, I'd love to see them over on our Facebook group which is called Sharon Cullen Art Tutorials. So go over there, join the group, post your pictures of your artwork that you've done, and I'd love to see if you've done any boxes like this. So have a great day, everybody. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.